Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So before we proceed with this episode, what I would like to tell you is that if you have not seen the system design introduction video, wherein we have discussed about the architecture of this mini project that we are building, I would highly recommend you to check the same. I will leave a link to the description as well so that you can click, check the same and then get back onto the video. So in our last video, what we have done is we have replaced MySQL and we have added Cassandra over there, right? We have tested it, we have inserted records, we have retrieved records and we have seen it working and everything seems to work as expected, right? So today we are going to explore Nginx. So we are going to understand what Nginx is. We are going to play around with the Docker container. We'll create a Docker container out of it. We'll pull the image. We'll, uh, we'll see how it works. So Nginx can work as many things. It can work as a reverse proxy, a load balancer, HTTP cache, a web server, but we are going to focus on the load balancer side. So we are going to understand what a load balancer is, why it is required and how do we configure them and uh, different scenarios so in this video before we deep dive into nginx let's understand what a load balancer is so let's say we have our service url feeder over here right and let's take some assumption based on it so let's say that it can handle about um, 2000 requests per second this is just a imaginary number so i just want you to understand so what happens is when we receive url when our api is being called so let's say it's called with uh, initially with 100 and uh, it, it's getting popular our service is getting popular it went to thousand requests per second and uh, eventually it went to 2000 requests per second and let's say with uh, the popularity in hand our service started growing and we needed and we are now getting 10,000 requests per second then what happens to our service? We can just process 2000 requests per second, but we are getting 10,000 requests per second. So user will get some errors or it will take longer time and things like that. So eventually what will happen? Our demand will go down and people will move to other such services or things like that. And now if you look at this, that we can process 2000 requests per second. So what if I introduced four more service who can handle it so what will happen we'll spin up another four services over here so each one is taking 2000 requests so what will happen is now we will be able to take 10,000 load spinned up uh, four other services what happens is each of my services can hold 2000 rps right and with that we can achieve the 10,000 rps that is coming to us so now what will happen over here so these are the same services and these are running in five different computers or five different hosts right so they will have different ip address so this is just to give you an idea that these are different machines so what will a user do now so a user has to know all these ip addresses and the port they are running in right and they have to send the request to 10 18 27 135 and or this one or this one or this one or this one so he has to know so many right so if our application grows the number of machines will also grow so how will a user know all these things these are my internal details and i don't really want to expose this to my user what if say that all my 10,000 user is calling a single service so they are failing right so this is where a load balancer comes handy so let's say this is my load balancer over here let's call it lb so, and this has its own ip so let's say 10 18 90 142 let's assume it so what will happen the user will call this load balancer this service over here and this load balancer will see based on different strategies it will route the request to one of the systems so all the 10,000 requests that lands over here is routed to either of these five machine there can be various strategies like round robin so what will happen it will just evenly distribute like cards first one goes to him second goes to him third goes to him fourth goes to him fifth is to him and it goes on right or what we can do is we can have other strategies also like least connection so the machine with the least number of load will get the request not um, 
uniformly like uh, round robin so wherever there is a least connection it will go mm -hmm. if we want to send a particular user to a particular machine all the time we can use strategies like ip hashing so based on the user's ip he will be redirected to that machine so whatever the ip address the incoming request is coming from the hash will be calculated so the ip will remain the same the hash function will remain the same and uh, every time we do a ip hashing we get the same number and we send the request back to the same server again and again so this can work more like a sticky session you can say that for a particular user i am always sending him to the particular machine so once again if you go to the nginx site you will find all those strategies that we have talked about like a round robin least connection least time is also there so the the machine so the machine who's taking the least amount of time sends request to the server selected by a formula that combines the fastest response times so out of these five machines over here who takes the lower time the request is sent to him and that continuously changes based on the performance we talked about IP hashing, there is a normal hashing also, there are six or seven of them. So now let's look at another scenario where load balancing can play a very interesting role. So out of this 10k request, when we dig deep, we saw that uh, almost 4k request is coming for Europe region. And let's say a 6k request is coming from Asia region. Now in this strategy, we have not talked about the geographical boundary. So we have put the system into a single place. Let's say we have placed it in somewhere in India. So what happens is when this 4K request hits the load balancer, he is routed all the way to a server in India. So what will happen is we'll have a higher latency because of the network IO. So there will be multiple hops that the request has to go through in order to reach India from Europe, somewhere in Europe. So that, that can be a problem. So how load balancing can help over here? So let's say we have this services, right? We have created this, um, <coughs> we have created this URL feeder services. So I know that to support 4K request, I need just two machines. Just for example, we should take some buffer, but uh, let's understand the problem rather. So I will take two machines and what I will do, I will put them somewhere in the Europe. And I know that 6K request is coming from Asia. I'll put the three ma machines into a Asia server, right? And now what I'll be doing is I will have my load balancer in place. Let's say this is my load balancer over here and let's give it an IP address. So whenever you send a request, it comes and lands over here, right? <coughs> And what I need to do based on your IP, I will send you to the right region. So let's say that based we are using a strategy of IP hashing over here. So based on this, what I'll do is I'll not send you to the service. I will send you to another load balancer over here. Who is belonging to the same Europe region. So let's say this is my Europe region. So I will end up into the load balancer of the Europe region. So let's say this is running in. 10, 32, 71, 84. So what I'll do over here, since my request is in, in the Europe boundary, so I will use a round robin over here and the request will get redirect to either this machine or it will go to this machine. And the same thing I will repeat for Asia as well. So you can see that in certain scenarios, we can use multiple load balancer also in order to distribute the load, the strategy. The first load balancer is responsible for sending to the other load balancer of the corresponding region or the nearest region. And the second load balancer, what he is doing, he is routing the request back to the respective service in its region, right? So what will happen is the latency or the network hops will come down because a person with the, the IP address of a Europe region will end up always in this load balancer over here and his request will go to one of this machine and similarly we'll do the same thing with asia so we'll have a load balancer placed over here in the asia, asia region so, and let's say this is my boundary so what will happen he will have his own ip over here and he's using a round robin or a least connection whatever you you want based on the ip it will send the request over here and he will 
do a round robin between them. So what are the two things ensured over here that the load is balanced and not just balanced uh, blindly but it is distributed in a much more intelligent manner. So I am checking the region of the user and based on that I am sending it to that region's load balancer and he is doing the round robin or the list connection over here. And it is not only limited to your servers only you can do it at any layer between your cache and your application between your database and your application between your any two services you can go ahead and create a load balancer so load balancer is not restricted only to the entry point so you can have it anywhere where you want to evenly distribute the load and you want to scale right so this is not limited to it so what we are going to do today is we are going to create three services, three different services. Uh, I know we don't have three different machines. I have only one machine. So I will, so I'll have to run it in the local host, but what I'll do is I'll change the port. So we'll run three uh, instance of our URL feeder service in three different ports. And what we'll do is we'll configure Nginx so that our request goes to the server on a round robin fashion and we'll see how we configure our load balancer and how we get things up and running so over to the console so let's see what we have so nothing is running so in order to run our application two things should be running so one is cassandra that we have created yesterday and the other is um, redis so these two services are up and uh, they are running at the moment yes let's see yeah both are running we are going to run three instances of our url feeder service so let's start with the first one so here is our usual command that we use uh, what i'll do is we'll change it to url feeder service one which is running in 8085 so similarly we'll start uh, two more services and uh, i will stack them over here so there is not much uh, change in the command it's going to be the same so here in this new terminal what we'll do is we'll start up a new instance of URL feeder service and we'll call it URL feeder service 2 and we'll move and uh, we are going to map 8086 so the last one was at 8085 so we'll start one at 8086 so let's um, get it up and so we have this new instance of command prompt and what we are going to do is we are going to start another instance at 8087 and we'll call it URL feeder service 3. So let it come up by then what we'll do is we'll arrange all our services. So here we have the three window, window stack. The one at the top is our URL feeder service 1 running at 8085. This one is running at 8086. This one is running at 8087. So over to our postman over here. So we'll uh, quickly go ahead and do a ping check. So we'll uh, change it to. So we'll change it to get. And what we'll do is we'll do a ping test, and we don't require any body. So if I send it to eight zero eight five, you can see the first one over here got the request. So it it got the request and it uh, did what it was supposed to do. Now I'm changing this from 8085 to 8086. So this one should land up over here. So let me scroll to the bottom. So when I send the request, you can see that he's getting the request. And similarly, if I send the request to 8087 over here, so it will land up to this guy over here. So you can see that we have the same application running in three different ports, right? So we'll get the image of Nginx. So as you know, it's going to go ahead and pull the latest image of Nginx and we are going to see how we are going to configure Nginx and um, we are going to work with that. Okay, so the download is complete. It's uh, extracting at the moment. So once the image is available, we are going to go ahead and uh, do all the required configuration to make uh, Nginx work like a load balancer error project will create a new folder called nginx so now that we have created the nginx folder let's go ahead and create the configuration file so what we are going to basically do in nginx is to create a configuration file um, so there is no code 
So nginx basically works on this configuration file called nginx.conf. So this will get loaded inside nginx when it starts up and it will behave as per the configuration that's provided. So we are going to create a configuration file in our local system. So we have the file over here and here we'll define the rule how nginx is going to behave. So let's get rid of all these things that's present over here. So here basically, uh, so this is basically the nginx server configuration as i mentioned so uh, we have to provide the events and uh, there are no events so i'm going to keep that empty apart from that we have to define how our http server will behave so we are going to provide the json like structure over here so we are going to provide the configuration over here nginx will get the request and based on the request it's going to route to one of your upstream services so that will here nginx is working more like a gateway right where all the incoming traffic will land up so we have to define the upstream servers that we have so we need to define all the upstream servers and we need to provide the server config over here since uh, nginx will be running inside the docker we cannot give it as local host right so we have to uh, give the ip address of each of the services each of the three services quickly do is we'll uh, open a terminal and we'll go ahead and inspect each of the containers So the first one is running at 172.17.04. So we are going to grab this and it's um, running in 8085. All the application is running at 8085, right? So we have three services. We'll specify all of them over here. So let's go ahead and check for the service two. It's at uh, 17.05. So 05. And uh, the third one is at uh, 07 i don't know who's using 06 anyways so these are our three of the upstream services and we need to provide a name to it so let's call it url feeder service right and uh, now we are going to configure how our server is going to behave so now we are going to configure the server's configuration so the first thing that we need to say is where do we listen so we listen to port 8080 so all our request is now going to go ahead and hit 8080. Okay. Apart from that, what else we need? We are uh, doing based on the location. So let's provide the location over here. And uh, whatever the location is, what we'll do is we are going to do a pass. So whenever Nginx gets a request, it's going to forward it to either one of these three, right? So we are going to set up a proxy pass. And we are going to redirect everything that we request so we are going to redirect everything that's coming to us to the url feeder service that's all that's all from the configuration so we are going to save this and uh, i'll just quickly show you where this is all available so you can go ahead in the documentation where all the configuration has been uh, talked about so you can just get the configuration so we are using a basic configuration and uh, if you wanted to specify the way you want to load balance so you can specify that as well so everything can be configured over here so you can see that they're using least connection and uh, by default nginx uses um, round robin so we don't need to specify that so in our folder we are done with nginx so all our configuration is here and the next thing is that we are going to create a docker image out of it so we are going to create another file over here and we'll call it docker file this is going to be very straightforward this docker file so we are going to um, so we are going to use the image nginx and basically we are going to copy our nginx font that we have just created to the particular folder inside the docker container where nginx generally uh, store is etc slash nginx slash nginx dot com so basically what will happen is uh, there is already a file with the name nginx.conf and we are going to override with the file that we have just created so we're going to save it and we are going to close it so both our files are now ready first we are going to build this um, docker image so we are going to build the image now using the docker build command and uh, we have to provide a docker file so the name is a docker file and we'll name it we'll have to give the image a name so we'll call it uh, ng next 
URL reader. Right, so just giving a name over here, and uh, whatever is inside the current folder is um, going to get built. Okay, so our image is kind of ready now. So let's go ahead and check it from Docker images, and um, we see that we have nginx URL feeder. So we are just going to start our container, and uh, let's uh, go ahead and start the container. So Docker run, and followed by a name. So we are going to give the name as URL feeder LB load balancer and uh, we have to listen to 8080 and we'll map it to our 8080 and we are going to use nginx URL feeder. That's it. So it should go ahead and start the Docker container. So you can see that it's ready it's ready to take the request so what i'll do is i'll keep it parked at the top corner and let's uh, bring all those windows that we have created earlier so all of them are running so this is url feeder service one two and three let's get the postman over here so let us send a few requests and it should do a round robin over here so let's say apple.com so I send this request, you can see over here, it will come here and then it will go to either of the one. So apple.com, it goes here, you can see, right? It, um, let me zoom in for you. So apple.com has landed over here. And uh, next is say microsoft.com. And you can see that it swings out over here. The next request has come over to this guy, microsoft.com. And again, if I say github.com, you can see that it came over here. So, so now you can visualize how the load balancer. So all the requests has ended up in the load balancer as well over here, as you see. All the requests has landed up into a load balancer and then it was rerouted based on the configuration that we have provided. So I've just uh, initiated the load test. So let's run it and you can see that it's being distributed so evenly right so the load will be so much distributed over here so the hundred request is going to each one of these servers right and they are doing their processing so this is what the work of a load balancer is so so whenever a request comes it uh, does the distribution of the load based on your configuration and it sends the request to one of your uh, configured hosts so in this case we did a round robin and we saw that it's uh, being split it across multiple uh, servers and we can see that um, it, it's already been done so we are almost done with all the requests so there was around 500 url and we see that 496 of them is complete and we can see that there is no movement in our uh, servers anymore so it's kind of done so if i run again and it will be done in a flash so let's run it again and you can see that how how fast everything gets processed right we had done with 500 and only those four url that has failed was processed and every log that if you see over here will have a cache hit and uh, it will be returned back from the cache right so you can continuously see serving from cache serving from cache and you can see the benefit of having um, redis in place right how redis is providing us that cushion over here so each of the server you can see that serving from cache nothing is being processed right so once again now if you see our database it will be completely populated it will be filled with data so uh, before we end this video let's go ahead and see that and it will be an interesting thing to see so we are inside our database now and we are using url feeders and we do a select are from url and it should be filled with data right and you can see that we have all the urls stored with us right and um, yeah that's all from this video so i hope you got the idea how load balancing works and uh, how how easily we can distribute the load and the different scenarios where we do this load balancing kind of thing i hope you got some fair idea do let me know if you have any comments or uh, if you have any doubts i'll be more than happy to help you you and uh, once again we are going to see more topics more type of load balancers and uh, reverse proxy kubernetes and many things down the line so yeah we are not going to use the load balancer in our system but i thought it's an important thing that you should be knowing
so i thought of covering this in this video over here so yeah that's all from this video stay safe uh, stay subscribed and please refer this to your friends as well let the channel grow so thank you once again bye bye and have a great day